Hi, this is Don. This is the second screencast tutorial demonstrating how to create a digital portfolio. So at this um, juncture you have already created your portfolio folder with folders inside for each of your standards and your professional portfolio and within the standards you have your artifacts and your reflections. So you're now ready to start where we left off last time. So I'm going to um, go to Google Sites and go through the process of starting or creating a web-based portfolio. So we already have our um, Google account or our Gmail account. So the next step is to get a site. So I'm going to go to Google Site, oops, Google Sites, and Free Websites and Wikis. Okay, now I'm going to come back to this uh, one that I've already created to kind of save a little bit of time, but let me at least walk you through the creation process. So if you click on Create, the first thing you see are you have some options for these templates. Now you could start with a blank template and pretty much design your own, or you can choose one that's already ready-made and customize it. And I think that's really the strength of using Google Sites. So I'm going to um, look through some of those um, templates. So if I go to Browse the Gallery for more, I could just scroll through and look at all of them, but um, I think I want to focus a little more, and I already know that there are some good portfolio templates in schools and education. So I'm going to click on that. And here you can see some options. For example, here's the one that I um, tried earlier or showed you earlier. Here's, let's see, some other examples. You notice that um, there are a lot of these that could probably work really well. There's a student e-portfolio, teacher website template, so I think there are lots of options and I would just um, experiment and look at some of these and decide the one that fits best for you. So there's nothing to be lost by checking these out. So you can preview, for example, this one and you can see, well, does this meet my needs? This is actually one that looks as if it's um, for a technology portfolio. And so I don't think um, I want to use that. So I'll just get out of that and go back to my browsing. So let's, oh, I need to go back to schools. There we go. All right, so let me go down here a while and see if I can find the one that I decided to use and that I've already started to um, customize. I believe it was called Newman Teacher Portfolio. Yeah, there it is. So this then is the template that I chose for my um, portfolio. Now you can see why I chose it because um, it already has the pages for some of the standards. You'd have to add a couple more. And if you go to Iowa Teaching Standards, well, you could easily change this to Idaho Teaching Standards. So I'm eventually going to, uh, to use that template, I think. All right, so what I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to go back again to save some time and open up this portfolio, my internship portfolio that I created using that template. Okay, so here we are, and you can see that once you have your portfolio created, then you have a menu up here. There are two things that uh, you can um, that you'll be using a lot, so they're right here available for you. One is this thing that looks like a pencil icon. That's to edit the page, and then to add a new page. So I think I want to uh, go to this Iowa Teaching Standards page and I want to edit it. So I'm going to click on the Edit Page button. 
And you'll notice when I do that, I have a menu here that looks very much like a word processing menu. So you should be re really familiar with that. And of course, um, as far as editing text and other sorts of things, it works just like a word processor. So it's real easy to come in here and change this to Idaho Teaching Standards, the title of the page. And then I could go in and copy and paste or do whatever I need to do to make this fit um, my particular needs. So if I go up now and save it, it now says Idaho Teaching Standards and I'm ready to go. I want to do another edit just kind of for the fun of it. Um, oh, I don't want to do that on that page though. Let me go back to the home page. So here would be the first page that the uh, portfolio viewer would see when they clicked on your URL. So I'm going to go in and edit that and I could say, you know, I could talk about all the information here that and welcome my portfolio, etc. But you'll notice there's also an insert tab here and there are lots of things that you can insert. In this case, I'm going to insert an image. Ah, and so I've uploaded this image and I'm going to choose that and um, I'm going to include this in Oops, I'll re-choose it, sorry, okay. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to open that and choose it, and now I'm going to include that in my um, page. And of course you can do lots of things. You can, you know, um, adjust how it appears. It can be centered or to the left and text wrap around and all that sort of thing. So. You can play around with that. You can make it larger, smaller, and so forth. But I'm going to say that's okay, and I'm just going to save it. So now I've got an image on my home page. So that's a that's really exactly like you would have done it if you were um, adding an image to your blog. Okay, now I've already added another um, page down here for philosophy of education because I was thinking about those uh, additional pages beyond your standards. So let's create another page at this same level and um, maybe we can call it your, um, let's see, how about your action research? So I'm going to create a page for action research. Now notice down here, where do I want to put it? Do I want to put it at the top level? I do, um, because I want it to be, actually I want to put it under home. That's what I want to do. I want to put it under home on the same level as the standards. Okay. So I'm going to create that page. Yeah, so now you can go to your philosophy of education page or your action research page, or your standards page. Now, note if I go to the standards page, it tells you know generally what all of the standards are, and then there's a page for each of the standards. So if I go to standard four, that's the one we were looking at earlier, you can see I've already added a sub page with an artifact. So that would be artifact number one. And it's my PDF file, so if I click on it here, it loads and it comes up and I can see my PDF file. So I would like at that same level to create or to add um, my reflection for Artifact 1. So I'm going to go back to Standard 4 and I'm going to open the Reflections folder and I'm going to get my reflections for Artifact 1 and open that. So you can see how easy it is once you have the pages created to start um, adding what is... And, and by the way, um, for Artifact 1, if I were to edit it, I would come in and I would actually describe what the artifact was. All right? Okay, so... When someone clicks on standard four, they can see that the subpages artifact one has 
the actual artifact itself and the reflection for the artifact. Okay, if I go back again to standard four and I want to add another artifact, then I have to add another page at that same level, and that would be artifact two, create. I can describe it, then add the file. So you can see how easy it is to build up your portfolio uh, once you have a good template that really works. And of course you can also um, add links if you want to do that, or if you go to insert, you can even insert uh, video, YouTube or uh, Google videos. Okay, so I have my portfolio created just like I like it, but it's pretty boring and bland. So if I go to more and go down to manage site, then I can maybe look at, oh, let's see, how about some other themes? Ah, oh, here a selection of themes. So I could look through some of those and say, okay, how do I, how would I, and, and, and you can um, try these out too. So you can click on one and preview what your portfolio will look like with that particular theme. Okay, I'm pretty easily satisfied, so I think um, I'm going to actually save it, save my portfolio with that theme. All right. So I'm going to stop there because I think that from now on it's just a matter of you uh, deciding how you want to make things look and what you want your portfolio to look like. I kind of like this. And you notice that it, um, it's very easy to navigate, and, uh, and it looks pretty good. Okay, so I'll stop there, and um, if you have any questions or concerns, just email me, and I'll see if I can help you. But uh, again, I think this is a very quick way for you to create your digital portfolio.